This is E.T. The following information, or at least much of it, comes from this book here that I'll put up by Ken Brooks. It's on Ingemar Johansson. It's a good read. Pick it up if you're a fan of boxing generally. A never-lose theme in films, in particular comedy movies, is the buddy arrangement, pairing or juxtaposing two seemingly incompatible characters who are expected to function together in pursuit of some common objective. I'm thinking of, oh, let's see, Laurel and Hardy, uh, Bob Hope and Bing Crosby, who else? Oh, Martin and Lewis, with a bit more seriousness, uh, Mel Gibson and uh, Danny Glover, Chris Farley and David Spade. Now, one would not expect fighters to partner up with past competitors. And this is especially true if we're talking fighters of different race or ethnicities, different family backgrounds, and so on. But boxers such as Jack Johnson and Stanley Ketchell, Joe Lewis and Max Schmeling, Ingemar Johansson and Floyd Patterson, they illustrate that warriors even those who previously gave their all against each other, can and do forge a bond, peculiar to and understandable among only ring combatants. The least likely business and personal relationship had to have been that between two former world heavyweight champions, again, Ingemar Johansson and Charles Sonny Liston, neither of whom met each other in the ring, but they did fight opponents in common. Uh, who, Eddie Machen was knocked out by Johansson in the first round. Uh, he was decisioned by Sonny Liston. And then there's Floyd Patterson. He was KO'd by Johansson and later KO'd Johansson not once but twice. But Sonny Liston knocked out Patterson, twice in the first round. But Johansson and Liston did forge a business and personal relationship that affected both former champions in a very positive way. Virtually unknown, even among boxing fans, is this story about Sonny Liston and Ingemar Johansson. And it goes like thus. Sonny Liston after his two suspicious fights with Muhammad Ali, had lost his money, he was in debt, he could not find a fan base because he was seen by his black fans as representing a pre-civil rights era and thus not deserving the kind of following that was claimed by a young fighter named Cassius Clay who would change his name to Muhammad Ali and become a Muslim. And white fans viewed Sonny Liston as a thug, a leg breaker for the mob, an ex-con, likely to beat up strangers and steal their wallets. So Liston, being a nearly unbeatable fighter, who maybe threw his bouts against Muhammad Ali, was so unrelatable and unlikable that he just couldn't draw fans, and he couldn't get fights, until another former heavyweight champion, Ingemar Johansson, stepped into the picture. Now, Ingo and his promotional partner, uh, I think it was a boyhood pal named uh, Bertolt Knudsen, met with Liston's manager and signed him, Liston, to a $150,000 contract. Now, that's about $1.2 million in today's money in March of 2022. Now, Sonny Liston had to perform in four bouts. The first one would be scheduled in Sweden for July of 1966. It was against Gerhard Zeck, a German heavyweight champion. The deal worked out well for both ex-champions, 
and both became good friends. The only problem when Sonny, who was accompanied by his wife Geraldine, was met by a young woman standing on the Swedish airport tarmac holding the hand of Sonny's three-year-old son. He had been conceived when Sonny visited Europe, I think it was in 1963. And a nice story here is the Listons adopted the boy and took him back to the U.S. Johansson's plan was to undo Liston's unsavory image, which he, Johansson, now believed was a very incorrect image. He wanted to bring Sonny to the public, let them see him working out, let them hear Sonny talk in interviews and in public appearances, and Sonny Liston apparently enjoyed all of this. Sweden accepted him, and I'm quoting um, Brooks in his book, Ingemar Johansson. He said, the gifted world-class athlete that he was, was accepted by the Swedes. Well, let's look at the fight. The 1st of July, I think, in 1966, 12,000 fans went to see Sonny Liston, and that's more than those who attended the first and second Liston Ali fights. The crowd filled the Stockholm Hockey Arena, and the fight went this way. At first, things, things seemed competitive, but Liston was about 10, maybe 12 pounds above his normal fighting weight. He looked out of condition. And Zek, at age 28, was in his prime. In the seventh round, Zek was just covered with blood. And he was knocked out with a left-right combination from Liston. For the next month and a half, both ex-champions, Johansson and Liston, traveled together through western Sweden. And Liston was putting on four exhibitions per week. He's pulling in 2,500 for each session. Sometimes he's seen boxing with Floyd Patterson's brother, Ray. On August 19, 1966, the second fight will be against Amos Johnson, a California heavyweight, who did beat a young fighter named Cassius Clay when both were amateurs. Clay became Muhammad Ali. Well, this fight drew 20,000 fans to a Gothenburg, Sweden stadium. Liston put Johnson down two times in round three. The referee stopped the fight. Well, two more fights are required by the contract, but few fighters want to be in the ring with Liston, and I'm talking about big names who were asked. So Liston flew home with his wife and child to Las Vegas. He returned to Sweden about a half a year later, he had no money. Where it went, nobody knows. His third fight will be for the 30th of March, 1967. He would be paired with a fighter named Dave Bailey. He'll knock him out in one round. About 5,000 fans saw that fight. The fourth fight will again be in Sweden against Elmer Rush. A San Francisco dock worker, once ranked contender. He had a draw against Eddie Machen. Well, Liston knocked Rush down nine times in the sixth round. Finally, the referee stopped it. Well, with his obligations fulfilled, Sonny Liston goes back to the U.S. He'll fight 12 more times. His final fight will be in June of 1970. He has a TKO win over Chuck Wepner. Wepner, you may recall, was the model used by Sylvester Stallone for his character Rocky Balboa. Six months later, Sonny Liston is dead. What happened is a big unknown. Officially, it was a heroin overdose. Sonny will be listed at the age of 40. Nobody believes it. They think he's much older. At the Las Vegas funeral in January of 1970 were 700 plus mourners. The honorary pallbearers 
included a list of greats. Joe Lewis, Archie Moore, uh, one of the greatest performers ever in show business, Sammy Davis Jr., Perhaps the greatest basketball player to ever have lived, Will Chamberlain. A comedian, Godfrey Cambridge. And Ingemar Johansson. You may wonder if Liston and Johansson ever discussed about between the two of them. Well, I don't think so. Ingemar, at the time he had Liston in Sweden, was way out of shape. He never enjoyed working out, and he was addicted to sweets, and he was a realist. Before Ingemar signed Liston up for those Swedish bouts, he had been offered half a million dollars to come out of retirement and fight Liston. And it was reported that Johansson said, and I'm quoting him, I like money, but not that much. And that is the story of one of the least likely to happen friendships in boxing history. Did you like it? If so, hit the uh, thumbs up icon. Do subscribe to this channel. You see the bell icon, tap that. You'll be notified of new uploads. And uh, if you have something to say about the video, put in your comments below. Thank you.